I'm really proud and honored to have taught so many people photography through this YouTube channel, through books like Stunning Digital Photography and our other video training. But I also talk to people who fail to learn photography, who find cameras to be just too hard. And one of the most confusing aspects of photography is our existing, extremely outdated system for measuring camera settings. I'd like to propose an entirely new system and make it completely open source so that anybody who decides to implement it can do so. First, let's talk about duration, which is my replacement for the term shutter speed. It's very straightforward. I'm simply measuring the time the shutter is open in milliseconds instead of fractions of a whole second. Therefore, a shutter speed of 1 1,000th will simply be labeled D1. A shutter speed of 1 20th of a second will be labeled D50. This gets rid of the fractions, it simplifies it, and in all cases except for fast shutter speeds over 1 1,000th, we will not have to use a decimal. I think I would have liked to have used one tenth of a millisecond, except the millisecond is a unit of time that people are already familiar with. Notice that this unit of measurement uses the letter D followed by the number. This helps separate it from the other camera settings, so we don't have to say your shutter speed is 50. We can simply say I'm at D50. I chose the term duration because the initial D works in just about all of the languages that I looked up. Thus, it should be easier to teach in other countries. Now I want to talk about the replacement for aperture, which is the most difficult to understand, but probably the most important. First, I'm not going to base the new aperture system on the existing f-stop system at all. I'm going to instead base it on t-stops. The difference here is that t-stops measure the light output from the back of the lens, whereas f-stops measure the physical diameter of the opening of the lens versus the focal length. The t-stop is a measurement of what is actually producing, whereas the f-stop is just a physical measurement, which doesn't necessarily correlate perfectly to the amount of light it's producing because, let's say, poor quality lenses especially can lose a lot of light internally as light is simply blocked or bounced around. That's why all cinematographers use t-stops because they really need to nail the exposure as they cut from one camera to another. I'm also making the new aperture system linear. So if you double your aperture number from say one to two, you're increasing it by one stop. Smaller aperture numbers, of course, produce darker images. Thus, A1 indicates a very small aperture while A1000 indicates a very big aperture. I did base it roughly on the existing t-stop system. So if you had a t1 lens, that will become an a1000 lens. And if you have a t5.6 lens, that will become an a30 lens. Perhaps more importantly is I'm no longer measuring the aperture based on the light intensity it produces. If you're familiar with f-stops or t-stops, they do not measure the total light that comes out the back of the lens, they measure the light intensity. So it's like the amount of light per square inch. Thus, an f2.8 lens is an f2.8 lens on a full frame camera or a micro four thirds camera, even though they produce very different results. I want photographers to be able to switch from a full frame camera to a micro four thirds camera and not have to be doing constant crop factor calculations. I want them to know exactly what they're getting, even if they switch to a different sensor size. For example, the new camera setting A30 would relate exactly to T5.6 on a full frame camera, T3.7 on an APS-C camera, or T2.8 on a micro four thirds camera. If you were to switch cameras and you were to dial in A30, you would get the exact same total light and the exact same background blur and depth of field. Thus, you would only have to do crop factor conversions when you are adapting a lens from a larger format sensor. Now, my replacement for ISO is extremely simple. I'm calling it luminance and I'm using the letter L to indicate that in front of the number. Here, we're just dividing the ISO by 10. So L10 is ISO 100, L80 is ISO 800, L320 is ISO 3200. It's so simple, but I still felt that ISO needed to be updated because the existing ISO name makes no sense, but also because it's a good chance to reset and get all camera manufacturers to use consistent settings, again, with that goal of allowing people to pick up a different camera, put in the same settings, and get similar results. Focal length is extremely confusing because we have to apply the crop factor if we want to understand the angle of view. Most smartphones nowadays, a lot of point and shoot cameras, instead express the angle of view just using the number of degrees. So for example, 
24 millimeters on a full frame camera is a 74 degree angle of view. That's the same angle of view you get at 16 millimeters or 12 millimeters. Of course, it makes more sense to talk about angle of view on the native camera system than it does to have to apply crop factor as you're trying to switch between systems. View simply uses the letter V followed by the number of degrees. So V74 indicates a 74 degree angle of view. V40 indicates a normal 50 millimeter angle of view. V24 indicates a narrower angle of view, similar to that of an 85 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. Now let's look at real camera settings and talk about how we could use the new system to discuss the entire settings that are used to create a photo. First, my settings would be read as V74 D2 A30 L80. On a full frame camera, you would read that as 24 millimeters at 1 500th of a second, f5.6 and ISO 800. You can see my system is much more compact. The V74 represents a wide angle angle of view, 74 degrees, relating to 24 millimeters on a full frame camera. The D2 means 2 milliseconds, which is the same as 1 500th of a second, but you don't need that fraction. A30 represents f5.6, but you do not need to write a decimal like 5.6. And if you double it, you could have the other numbers and achieve the same exposure without having to worry about the square root of two. L80, of course, very simple, relates to ISO 800 on a full frame camera. Now, with the existing camera settings, you would have to create an entirely different set of settings to produce a similar image with similar noise and similar background blur. With my settings, those settings would work regardless of which camera you used. So for example, on Micro Four Thirds, the settings would be 12 millimeters, 1 500th, F2.8, and ISO 200 to give you the same exposure. But my settings would still be V74, D2, A30, L80. Easier to communicate and learn. If you're interested in implementing this, I've provided the conversions from the existing camera settings. The ISO is simply divided by 10, the shutter is simply multiplied times 1000, and the aperture involves a little more complex math since the existing system is based on each stop being multiplied by the square root of 2. For the field of view, there are lots of field of view calculators out there. It's a little more complex because different sensor sizes have different aspect ratios, so you really have to look at the specific sensor that you're implementing it for. Once again, I think these will benefit everybody learning photography by making photography much easier to learn. Double any one value and you have any other value to maintain consistent exposure. There are absolutely no fractions in this system and a greatly reduced number of decimals making it easier to write and understand. The results are results based, not based on physical measurements like focal length or the aperture being the diameter of the opening of the lens, they're actually based on what the lens is producing. So you really know what you're getting, whether you're dialing in settings or purchasing new equipment. This will also reduce misleading marketing. And I'm specifically looking at all those smartphone manufacturers who are bragging about having like a 35 millimeter F1.8 lens and inviting full frame comparisons when they know full well that they cannot possibly produce the same results. I'm making this completely open source. Take it, modify it, whatever. And I want to make the point, this could be implemented with only a software update, even on cameras with pretty simple LCD displays. Now, do I expect anybody to actually adopt this? No. I love the idea of the Dvorak keyboard, but I don't use it. I use a standard QWERTY keyboard. The metric system didn't take off in the US. It's really hard to get people to change their habits. And the photography community, well, we actually revel in technical complexity. And I'd like to hear your comments down below on what you would do to make the complex technical aspects of photography more accessible to those people who are not technically inclined. Is there any chance of actually getting some camera manufacturers, software manufacturers like Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop to implement this new system as even a non-default option so that we could begin playing with it and using it to communicate? Thanks so much for subscribing and thanks for listening to me as I get a little bit nerdy today. <laughs> Bye.